This is a topic I've been meaning to touch on for a while now, and I don't think there's going to be any avoiding the controversy surrounding it. Let's go ahead and dive into AI image generation. Today, we'll explore some of the controversies surrounding just how deep learning is generating these images, why artists are upset about it, and what lies ahead for the technology. Today's video is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Core P3 Pro. Bring out the modder in you with Thermaltake's unique and modular open-air design. The Core P3 Pro offers room enough for nearly any build, with support for dual 420mm radiators, motherboards up to EATX in size, and room enough for even the largest of modern graphics cards. With an endless number of layouts and orientations, you'll be sure to turn heads with your next build in the Thermaltake Core P3 Pro. Click the link down in the video description to learn more. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. AI assistive technology, it's been around for at least 20 years, but we as consumers are just now finally starting to see the fruits of some of that labor. Tesla self-driving cars, RTX voice removal, and DLSS upscaling for video games. Deep fakes. Yeah, those are all AI-based technologies. But today we are going to deal with probably one of the most controversial ones in recent memory, and that is AI-generated images. Right around the middle of 2022, my Twitter feed was suddenly inundated with absolutely amazing depictions of my favorite follows. Images of people I know as action movie heroes, cyberpunk wasteland wanderers, incarnations of their D&D characters, and even more. But none of them were real nor were they created by an artist. All of them were AI generated. Over the years, we've steadily watched the growth of deep learning algorithms and AI image generation with the general feeling of, that's a cute trick, but it'll never put an actual artist out of work. And then we were looking at fantasy inspired depictions of our friends created with nothing more than 10 selfies from your smartphone and the power of decades worth of AI knowledge powered by stacks of servers somewhere halfway around the world. AI in a very short time went from something that was interesting but useless into technology that was accessible and practical for various use cases. Before 2022, seeing action movie or sci-fi avatars of ourselves was something reserved only for actors or cosplayers. But the ability to cast our own faces into parallel universes was something everyone wanted to see for themselves. So how did AI image generation get this good this quickly? Funny enough, it's the same process that an artist goes through to draw objects, people, and places. By looking at thousands of reference images, learning the context of them, and then leaning into a lifetime of experience to learn how to draw those things. And this is where some of the controversy surrounding AI imaging comes in. And that's not just my opinion, but the thoughts of thousands of artists, photographers, graphic designers, and hundreds of other creative professionals whose work has been uploaded as training images for these algorithms. The thing is, this learning process isn't new. It's the potential use cases of these images that creatives are calling into question. In 2010, you could download an AI model that would recognize objects you held in front of its camera. Things like hats, screwdrivers, apples, keyboards, balls, all recognized and highlighted in real time. Those AI models were trained via publicly viewable images to learn what those objects looked like and then how to recognize them in context. Fast forward to 2022, and we now have AI models that can generate pictures and works of art based on text alone, referencing thousands of publicly viewable images to create images that have never been seen before. The data used to create these images isn't all that different from the data that taught a Raspberry Pi how to recognize a bicycle, or a Tesla how to recognize a bicycle. It's all learned from reference images and captions about what those images included. And now we get into the murky area of this whole conversation. And to preface this, I am not a lawyer, nor am I giving any legal advice. US copyright law, as I understand it, does protect unique and derivative works of art, music, movies, and other forms of media. An artist learning how to paint rarely wakes up one day and just tosses oil onto a canvas. They learn how to use their tools. They study works from artists that came before them. They draw inspiration from their own life and their own experience. And then they practice for years to become the artists they develop into. In part, every artist creates derivative works from their own experience and art they've observed in the past. 
AI-generated art is skipping the paint for coup de corps, ignoring pesky things like eating, drinking, and breathing, settling instead for staring at a couple hundred thousand images of the greatest paintings ever created, then jumping straight to the payoff of all that hard work. But is it ethically right for an AI to draw inspiration from art we feed into it as training fodder? There's an old adage that kept popping into my head while writing this, and rest assured, this is not my final opinion on this subject. But stealing from one source is often considered plagiarism, and stealing from multiple sources is just called research. The issue here is AI doesn't know the difference between the two. And as music and art history will tell us, neither do the courts. Art? Photography, music, cinema, literature, YouTube PC hardware videos, there's not a single form of creative expression that doesn't draw inspiration from the same art forms that came before them. And the line between plagiarism and derivative work is often drawn by those who simply have more money. If you ask Paramore or Queen, plagiarism is anything that even closely resembles their original works, which they wrote through a lifetime of playing, writing, and performing music, after taking inspiration from thousands of musical artists who came before them. Just like Marvin Gaye, the lines are definitely blurred. But let's get down to a more concrete discussion. Can AI be used to steal an artist's work? AI generation tools like Stable Diffusion can generate images in the style of an artist that it's been fed training data on. Do you want an original portrait of craft computing by Pablo Picasso? Boom! Here are 30 of them, generated out of the server in my garage in less than 60 seconds. Did Pablo Picasso himself study my face for hours to create these 100% unique works of art? Of course not, but given enough training, reproducing images in his style can be accomplished, both by artists and by AI. On January 17th, 2023, Stability AI, otherwise known as the creator of Stable Diffusion, was issued a letter before action by Getty Images, claiming that Stability AI, quote, unlawfully copied and processed millions of images protected by copyright to train their software models. And according to a Waxy.org analysis of Stable Diffusion training images, there were a large number of images from dozens of stock photo companies, and some early models of Stable Diffusion had a propensity to recreate the Getty Images watermark. Now, in the most nuanced take you'll get from me on this channel, it's difficult for me to say who's right here. Getty Images is a company that makes its money photographing events, people, and places. Stock photo companies sell images of nearly anything your mind can come up with, but both sites have those photos publicly viewable online for anyone to see. Copying a single photo for commercial use in a newspaper or an online article would be an open and shut case of plagiarism. But what about studying the photos and recreating their style? On top of Getty images and stock photos, AI models are also trained with thousands of images of celebrities, copyrighted characters, company logos, game assets, and more. And while there are serious penalties for selling copyrighted work, fan art is yet another example of protected work under copyright law. Drawing your own picture of Mickey Mouse isn't going to land you in any legal trouble, but trying to sell that image definitely will. Getting down to what this controversy is about, artists and content creators are scared they're going to be shut out from income in favor of corporations simply replacing their work with AI. And again, I think they may have a point. Who needs a storyboard artist when you can simply train an AI model to draw them for you? But I think we might be overstepping the smaller point here. An AI model, at least right now, still needs source material to function. While I'm able to give specific prompts to Stable Diffusion to place me in a Starfleet uniform, or on stage at an Apple event, or in a poster as the star of my own action movie, and copyright logos and characters have appeared in these images, is this image generation any different from a Star Trek fan recreating their favorite prop, an Apple fan getting a tattoo, or having a laser sword duel here in my office? AI image generation isn't going away, and the ethical lines are already being drawn and then twisted by every single new argument and party that gets involved. Artists should always, and I do mean always, be compensated for their work. But anything publicly viewable has always been available for new artists to draw inspiration from. A Getty Images watermark or a unique chord progression in a song shouldn't be gatekeeping new art from being created. So why did I write this video if I don't have a clear answer or even opinion on the subject? It's because I'm interested in the technology, but I'm also a artist, a musician, a maker, a creator who doesn't want to be replaced by ChatGPT. 
which probably would have done a better job both writing and then speaking my thoughts about AI-generated art. But if I explore the tech in a video, I'm undoubtedly going to put a foot into the controversy, even if I don't pick a side. Tomorrow, I'm going to be uploading a tutorial for setting up Stable Diffusion on your own hardware at home, and I hope it might inspire someone to create new, unique, yet still derivative art with. I know I'm probably going to regret this, as there are 1,500 opinions from a thousand different perspectives, but if you have any thoughts on AI-generated art, artists being used as an upload for learning fodder, let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Mastodon at Craft Computing at hostux.social for daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. It was me, Jeff, the whole time. What? <laughs> beer for today is not a beer at all. It is an old fashioned because I can't think of an any better beverage to post a video like this. Probably my most controversial since I called wine an emulator or didn't mention Ventoy in a video not about Ventoy. Cheers.